Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we're going to have a look at the games that got the best scores for last month on our channel, the month being of course January 2022. We'll go from the game that got the lowest score up until of course the game that got the highest and whilst January is generally seen as one of the weakest if not the weakest month in terms of new releases, there were still some interesting games released including of course a first party Nintendo release. So which game got the highest score for the month of January on Switch Up? Well, let's find out. Kicking us off this month then, in 8th place was Heaven Dust 2. This is a survival horror game played from an isometric perspective that makes no apologies for borrowing heavily from classics of the genre and old school Resident Evil games in particular. It does a lot right, it's a decent and well constructed game, although it doesn't quite manage to emulate the atmosphere of the games it's inspired by and instead flat out copies a lot of elements which is a bit disappointing. Looking past that though, it is a fun time, although the price, whilst not outrageous, is a little too close to those classic Resident Evil games available on the Switch to make it an instant recommendation. It got a Switch Up score of 67%. Next for the month was Labyrinth Legend which began life as a mobile title and is essentially a dungeon crawler as you make your way further into various labyrinths. It's actually quite an accessible experience which definitely works in its favour and this is backed up by the local multiplayer option which is a great way to play it. On the more negative side, the implementation of an online mode would have helped to extend the longevity for those where local modes are not an option, and it can become quite repetitive, and although this is almost by design in such a game, the lack of polish hurts the game in this respect. Still a good option for a sale perhaps, it got a switch up score of 74%. Coming in at number 6 for the month was Monster Rancher 1 and 2 DX. Now this did release on the Switch late last year to be fair, but owing to our 12 days of Switch Up series, we had to delay our review until the beginning of this year. The Monster Rancher games first released for the PlayStation and one of the games was never actually released in Europe. They are monster raising and battling games that had a very interesting hook back in the day in that you were able to acquire new monsters by putting music CDs into your PlayStation which would then be scanned and monsters would be summoned from them via the disc's metadata. This is not possible of course on the Switch which means a new method, basically an internal database which you can use to search for digital versions of CDs from a variety of artists has to be used. Now it does work well enough but it does also rob the game of its most unique feature. They are still a lot of fun though and they do definitely offer a different take on other monster battling games. It got a switch up score of 79%. In 5th place we had one of our more recent reviews in Vagant. This is a 2D action adventure platformer with roguelite elements which released on Steam a few years ago to a very positive reception. You can choose from a number of classes as you attempt to make your way deeper into a mysterious cave on the hunt for treasure. You'll be taking on enemies and bosses along the way as well as grabbing items and weapons but the most interesting aspect is the background mechanic which basically modifies the playing conditions for each run and definitely keeps things fresh. A few technical issues let the game down a tad, little things such as an odd bug which means that the music will stop on entering a boss battle before picking up soon after. But aside from these it can definitely stand up with some of the best roguelites on the Switch and it got a Switch Up score of 81%. Now we have a three way tie for second place for this month and the first of the three games is Astroneer. This sees you dropped onto an alien planet and leaves you to explore and whilst there are story elements to pick up on, there is no real overarching storyline. There is the survival mode and a creative mode to unlock and you will find yourself crafting vital elements such as oxygen, battery packs 
and tethers to bind everything together as you explore in order to discover the needed resources to keep crafting. As well as this there are options to terraform the land around you and there is an online mode although at the time of reviewing it was not populated and could not be tested. It can be a little overwhelming at first and popping is prevalent as you walk around but nonetheless it is a great game and it got a switch up score of 83%. The second game in that tie for second place is Shadow Man Remastered. Shadow Man came out back in the late 90s and was a third person action adventure game based on the comic book series of the same name. Night Dive Studios have updated the game which has gone on to become a bit of a cult classic over the years with a large number of fixes such as improvements to the UI, improved bullet physics and tweaks to the artificial intelligence. There are bigger things such as restoring some unused animations and models which were censored from the original release and they've even added three new levels and new audio from the original composer. The game itself actually holds up very well irrespective of these updates but it's great to see such care and attention adorned on a remaster and it makes you wonder which games Night Dive could turn their attention to next. It is perhaps a little clunky these days and had they included an optional map as one of those updates then they really would have outdone themselves but even so it was the second game this month to get 83%. And the third game in that freeway tie for second place was Windjammers 2. This sequel to the classic Neo Geo arcade game comes almost 30 years after its predecessor and was developed by Dot Emu, who had also been involved in reviving a couple of other franchises in Wonder Boy and Streets of Rage. It stays very close to that first game in terms of basic gameplay mechanics, with the competitive disc throwing action still being incredibly compelling, plus it has a story mode for single players and local and online options for multiplayer. This is where you'll need to be looking to get a lot of your enjoyment from the game as once the story mode is finished there isn't a huge amount else to keep you invested and a few more game modes would really have helped to make this a must buy as the production values are incredibly high. Still it's a great time and of course it also got a switch up score of 83%. And in first place for January, a review that's just a couple of days old in fact, it's Pokemon Legends Arceus. This new entry in the Pokemon franchise veers off in a different direction as you explore your environment on a quest to catch as many Pokemon as possible to complete the first ever Pokedex in this prequel to the main series. You'll do this by crafting Pokeballs and then attempting to catch the Pokemon, either by being stealthy and throwing the balls at the unsuspecting creatures, dodging attacks from those that are more vicious in nature, or via the more traditional way of battling with your team to weaken wild Pokemon to a sufficient stage where you can then catch them with a Pokeball. New regions will unlock as you level up your rank, and moves can also now be performed in agile or strong ways which will affect the damage done, but also how quickly you can get another go. It can be a bit text heavy to begin with and it is repetitive by design but it also has that addictive quality that will have you wanting to continue catching more Pokemon, even if it's the same type over again as you survey and fill in the missing parts of the research within your Pokedex. A very interesting step for the franchise and one that leaves it up in the air as to where they'll go next, it got a switch up score of 86%. So there you have it, another month of reviews on the channel. Did you pick any of these games up yourself? And if so, what did you think of them? Please do put your thoughts in the comments section. We did review a couple more games to round it off to 10 for the month, but they didn't quite get scores that were high enough to warrant being in this video. I will though put links to all 10 reviews in the top in comment if you want to watch them for yourselves and get the full story. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.